So now, in section 4.4, we're going to learn what's called the multiplication rule. And this is always used when you have multiple picks. So we're going to be having one or more things happen in a row, in a sequence. So an example, just to make sure it's clear, is in the section that we just finished, we had asked the question, what is the probability of picking a person who is female or lives in Long Beach? In this case, we only picked one person. We were looking at two different attributes for the person, but only one person was selected. Now we're going to start solving problems that read, what is the probability of picking one person who is female and then picking one person who lives in Long Beach? In the end, we'll have picked two people. So when we go to create these probability fractions, we need to worry about the second pick. And if it are the, if something's changed, I can't come up quite with the best word. So what we need to know is if the two events are considered independent. And the definition of independent events is when the occurrence of any one event does not affect the probability of any other event. Another way that sometimes we'll word this is that replacement takes place. We've replaced the first pick. And so I give another example here. What is the probability of rolling a die and getting a two, then you pick up the die and roll it and get another two? So we don't say replacement took place in the sense it's not like we peeled the two off one side of the die on the first roll, but we still consider these two independent events. So to put into words, it's not truly with replacement, but the first roll had no effect on the second roll. So now we can go ahead and define the multiplication rule for uh, multiple events with independence, but first let's go ahead and solve it as a problem and see the rule. So we're going to take event A that we roll a single die and event B that we follow that by flipping a coin and our question is, what is the probability of getting a five and then tails? So we could list all of the outcomes as we've done here. And you'll notice that out of all 12 outcomes listed there, there's only one that has a five first and tails next. So if I had to find this probability, I would say that one of the 12 outcomes satisfies this back-to-back -back combination, which I could convert to a decimal and a percentage. But here's the thing to notice about that fraction. What if I was just to find the probability of getting a five and then just the probability of getting a tail? Well, if I multiply those two, I'm gonna get the same answer. The probability of getting a five is one sixth. One of the six sides of a die has a five on it. The probability of getting tails is one half. One of the two sides of a coin has tails. So as I multiply those fractions, I'm getting the exact same answer, and that leads us into the multiplication rule for back-to-back -back events with independence. The probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Keep in mind, this is when you have two events that are back-to-back -back that are independent. So we've seen the word and before, but that's not what we're looking at the same way here. It's not two attributes for one pick. Like when we said somebody is a girl and from Long Beach, this is meant as two separate items. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start solving a couple more problems. Question two, what's the probability of rolling a die and getting a four and then rolling it again and getting another four? So we kind of already asked this question before, but we didn't solve it. So first we need to double check if they're independent. And because rolling die is always independent, we're good. So we find the first roll has a one-sixth chance of happening. Now remember, we're looking for a four, but not four sides of the die, just the number four, which is one of the six sides of the die. And then we'll multiply that with our second roll, which again has a one-sixth chance of getting a four, one of the six sides of the die. And so as I multiply these across, I'm gonna get 2.8%, the probability of rolling two back-to-back -back fours. Okay, and now let's move on to question three. So I have this variety pack of cookies and it kind of breaks down to the different types. Who knows where you buy one broken up this way. But anyways, 
Find the following probabilities when a cookie is randomly selected and then replaced before another cookie is selected. So because the first cookie is put back in the jar, I'm not capable of putting a cookie back in the jar unless I don't like it, <laughs> but we'll assume that somebody other than me is doing this. Bottom line, we have independent events. So we can go ahead and use our multiplication rule. So question 3A, we want to select an oatmeal cookie, put it back, and then pick a chocolate chip. What's the chance that somebody would be doing that? Other than impossible because they'd eat the cookie. So the probability of an oatmeal cookie, five of the total 30 cookies listed were oatmeal. Be sure to count up the 15 chocolate plus the 10 peanut butter plus the five oatmeal gives us 30 total cookies. Because we have and then for independent events, that second cookie probability will get multiplied with the first. 15 of the cookies were chocolate chip. And so as I multiply across, I'll get 75 over 900 for 8.3%. Okay, let me solve this next one and you can solve C. So I'm going to select an oatmeal cookie, still 5 out of 30%. And then, so I still have a second cookie I need to multiply the probability with. Now this time, even though it's oatmeal, it doesn't matter. All 30 cookies are back in the jar. It's still 5 over 30. And you know, to save you time on the calculator, you might actually enter this as 5 over 30 squared to get your 2.8%. So let me have you solve C and let's check your answer. Okay. Did you get 0.9% for your answer? Now I admit I haven't done anything with three cookies in a row or three events, but the rule holds for as many events as you're working on. So you should have first had 10 over 30 for your first peanut butter cookie, then five over 30 as the next cookie comes out as oatmeal, and again, five over 30 as your next cookie comes out as oatmeal. Be careful if you wanted to multiply 10 over 30 to your prior answer. Don't multiply it with the rounded answer. Multiply it before that. But either way, I got 0 .0092, etc. off the edge of my calculator, moved my decimal two places over and decided how to round to get 0.9%.